On today's episode, we talk about our top five favorite TV shows on Netflix. We talk about a couple people who done messed up. We have a moral debate and what we would do. And our review of (sighs) Dora the Explorer and the Lost City of Gold. All coming up on the Segway Podcast. Hey, welcome to the Segway. Best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. That's right, recording live from LeBron's backyard and officially on Podbean. Yay! Yeah, I don't. We're not on Google. I don't think yet, though. No, right? Not yet. I didn't do that yet. That's okay. So, what's up, Charlie? Um, I'm still getting over this cold. Yeah. Uh, I posted on Instagram the other day. I put a meme. Did or, you? Yeah. I you can still hear my voice. I I can. I think everybody can. Yeah, it's a good thing we're doing this today, not yesterday. Because still... yesterday you were a little. Just more disgusting than I am now. All right, so I have to ask this because the people the people want to know. There were no posts, so I, but I know you were sick. Yeah, how's the the walking thing? It's not gone at all yet. Okay, I I we'll give you a week because you were sick. It's because we'll, we'll give you a week because you were sick. So I expect three videos per week now. All right, that's coming fair. up. I'm rocking the Spudosaurus Rex. Oh, that's good. It's I'm very pleased to say that it's a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I had a state today. <laughs> How was it? It was really good. Medium rare? About, yeah. Yeah. But I haven't been healthy, I'll be honest. Like, I've been, and I am healthy in that I haven't been eating fast food. Like, fast food doesn't even tempt me anymore. Like, what am I going to get? A salad? Like, I guess. Yeah, yeah. like, t- fast food just doesn't tempt me. So, I have been eating less healthy, like, home cooked food, like a lot of meal replacement stuff. <laughs> like, I had nachos with this fake meat, and I've been eating burgers with this fake meat. So, it's like not really healthy stuff. Oh, yeah, but, you told me you had Chipotle with the fake meat. The Safritas, which are good. I, I endorse Chipotle Safritas. Still expensive. Oreo, Fuck, l- but... Oreo lasagna. <laughs> <laughs> Oreo lasagna. Yeah. I haven't quite dove into that. Uh, so there's a couple things I want to hit on. Let me get the sad thing out of the way. Uh, my manager told me this today. And sometimes, uh, okay, let me, let me preface this. When a celebrity dies, like you got hit by Toni Morrison, right? Oh my God. Yeah. Like it sucked, right? Yeah. And it's like, you have to kind of pull yourself back and be like, wait a minute. Okay. Like I didn't know this person. But I am being affected by their death. Mm -hmm. I don't think this will mean really much to you at all. But um, today, so you know what day we're recording. Today, uh, Fred McLeod passed away. He is half of the voice of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Like for a long time. Like I I don't have the numbers in front of me. But him and Austin Carr have been the commentators for the Cavaliers basketball on TV for a long, long time. And, And he's, I mean, he wasn't young. He was 67. But like still, like you, like I was not expecting him or Austin Carr to go anytime soon. It's just like, just kind of took me back. So I want to send my thoughts, condolences out to uh, Fred McLeod's family. Um, I know it hit all of the Cleveland Cavaliers fans, players, everybody, personnel hard. So just want to mention that. You hear that? I think that, I think that's actually that's sadness. Pick up. Yeah. Did you hear that they're gonna they're trying to turn Once Upon a Time in Hollywood into a series? What? Yeah. I don't know if it's going to have the, like, if it's one of those things where they don't have the actors from the movie, but they have, like, oh, look, I'm now playing the role of Rick Dalton. Like, haha, I'm not Leo, but, like, not. Nah. And I also can't imagine Leo in a TV series. No. Really? But Tarantino, like. Really? Yeah. So, uh, we'll keep you updated, I guess, on that. Uh, man, I just have so much stuff to get oh, to. Oh, you know, I saw BuzzFeed today, did like, a lit, like, a worst of, like, worst movies ever. Yeah? Was no, Grown Ups 2 on there? No, it wasn't. No, Should've it wasn't. Been. But Interstellar. Which I really enjoy was on the worst movies ever. Yeah, no, it's I feel like, I like it. Right, I, I want some. Don't like it that much. And also, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was on that. And I was like, I don't think this is. Was it? Accurate. Are you sure it was BuzzFeed or was it The Onion? <laughs> it was. It was BuzzFeed. Right, you I sh- you should check. find that article and post it because that's I, just fucking nuts. Okay. Grown Ups Two is bullshit. Okay, so this t- let's go back. Do you remember when we were talking about how Harry Styles did not want to do or be Prince Eric? Yes. Okay. So I said, somebody I know, well, no, I don't actually know him. Somebody is uh, trying to get a petition to get Link from Rhett and Link, Good Mythical Morning, to play Prince, Prince Eric in the movie. And I couldn't find the petition. Like, she posted it on the Twitter, and I tried it, and it didn't work. And I was like, I can't really endorse something that doesn't work. But she, so she reached out to us. It's called engagement, people. She reached out to <laughs> us. And she said, like, hey, I, I've been listening, which I super appreciate. But like, where's, you know, I hadn't heard you mentioned it. So I reached out again. I was like, hey, if you send me the link, I will absolutely push this because I endorse it. We made a post about how he looks like him. 
So keep your eyes peeled on our social media uh, for that petition. If you are a fan of Good Mythical Morning, let's get Link to play Prince Eric. Yeah, he's like 50, but uh, who gives a fuck? <laughs> so, okay, this is the last intro thing I have, and it's a question for you. Okay. I was listening to our last podcast, because somebody's got to drive these numbers, <laughs> and I cut you off. You said, if me and our server were not in a business relationship, she wouldn't have liked me. So I made a joke. She was like, oh, she hates queers. Because then I started talking about how you know we were... So anyway, back to what you were saying. Why do you think that she didn't like you? Oh, I don't know. I, you ever just like not resonate with someone? Yeah. It was just like I felt. I I I like. I, it wasn't that she didn't like me. It's just I didn't like her. Oh. Like there was like an intense kind of like. I don't think I want to be around you. Would you say it was more than a feeling? Yes. Okay. So this segment is check these out. It's uh we've done this a couple times before. So we are going to talk about five, not five, five each. We both have five television shows that are on Netflix right now. I mean, you know, it changes like constantly because stuff comes and goes. So I'm going to start us off. Have you seen Mindhunter? Mindhunter? Mindhunter, yeah. I've not. It's a fucking cool show. Do you know what it's about at all or no? No idea. It's about when they first started profiling serial killers, it's about how that kind of came around. And when did profiling start? The 60s, 70s. Okay. Cool. Uh, it's a cool show. Um, they, they just launched second season. Okay. I bet, like, I feel like shows like that get people so amped to be in that line of work, and they probably get in there, and they're like, well, this is boring. <laughs> probably, Where's yeah. all the serial killers and the people trying to... Yeah, it, it's a cool show, though. I like that one a lot. Okay. Here's here's one that I love. BoJack Horseman. Are you yeah, a fan? No. Dude, I love Bo... Isn't, see, that like... Bojack is a character. Okay, let me just explain. It's an animated TV show about a horse voiced by Will Arnett, who is like, he had his prime. He's pretty much Bob Saget. He had his uh, 90s run, and now he's just kind of like over the hill. Nobody really wants him. He's super into drugs and alcohol and stuff. And it's like, it's really dark with like little bits of humor. But it's just crazy because they have all these humans living with animals. And I just love all those puns and stuff, which I don't think are funny, but... Uh, I hate puns, but I, I, there are some really dark, real moments and I just like, like every episode connects and there's no like closure. It's like nobody reaches their arc in this show. It's just, just everything gets worse and then a little better and then much worse. And it, yeah, makes me feel good. So the next thing I have is, I don't think you'll have it. I didn't think you were going to have Mindhunter, um, but there's this animated show. It's on Netflix. Oh, Big Mouth. Nope. Okay. Uh, Disenchantment. Disenchantment. Yep. I liked uh, it. Have you seen it? One season, right? Yeah. It looks just like Futurama. Well, it's the same people. I know, but it looks just like it, it does. Too. And also, it sounds like it. Yeah. Yes. It's a good show. You don't have that, do you? No, I don't. Okay. I like that show, though. Um, I'm, There should be a season two eventually. It's, it's coming out soon if it's not out yet. I don't know the date. Are you going gonna to talk about it? or? Oh, sh- I don't Give me one second. <laughs> so, Disenchantment is about... A princess who doesn't want to be a princess. And uh, she has this little demon that follows her. Um, it takes place in like, like uh, kind of like a and d kind of realm. realm. What the fuck? What is wrong with me? Or I say realm and not world. <laughs> what is wrong with me? Uh, but it takes in places. There's like magic and monsters. And uh, it's uh, like medieval times. Yes. Yeah. It's a funny show, though. I, I know. I liked it. Claire started watching. I was like, oh, what is this? And then I, all of a sudden, I'm 10 episodes in. I'm like, yeah. oh, this I'm going to steal this from you. I'm sorry. Riverdale. (laughs) (laughs) Suck it. Dude, Riverdale. It's so good. I don't know. Like, it's got the rewatchability. Okay, it's it's the Archie comics. I don't know how much you want me to go. It's got the Archie comics. It, like, it has so many different layers. I don't want, like, it's just these four kids and that the four main kids. Which, did I ever tell you Claire met Archie? I think I did. Yeah. When we yeah, were in the, I saw the picture. We were in the gorge in Washington State. He did not want anybody to talk to him. <laughs> he was trying his hardest to like hide his bright red hair, but Claire just went right up and got a picture. He didn't look happy. Um, but it's great teen drama. I really enjoy it. There's, it there, uh, it's dumb as fuck, but I yeah, love it. Lo- yeah, a lot of uh, off-the-wall type things. It's ridiculous, Long- especially towards the, the later season. Yeah, this most recent season is interesting. The Black Hood is sweet. Like, yeah. there's there's a lot of different layers. Like, if you only like, like if you if there's one part of the the show that you don't like, it'll probably be gone within like six episodes anyway. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you, um, you know, there's actually a podcast I listen to that has like a, a series that talks about it. No. Uh, page seven. 
page seven. Yeah, you should listen to it sometime. Okay. Also, uh, Riverdale has something that I love, which is a character that you love to hate. Veronica's father. I, what's oh, his yeah, name? Yeah. Uh, uh, something, Hiram. Hiram, Hiram Lodge. Lodge. I love to hate him. Oh, he's and that's great. Uh, when you can respect a villain character, it's a good thing. Every man has like an eight pack on that show. <laughs> so I'm going to steal this from you. I don't know if you have this on your list, but it made me think of it because it's related. It's also a Netflix. Is it Scream? No, oh. green, green. no. Scream. Oh, no. Uh, Sabrina. I don't. You don't have that on your I list? I don't oh, have it. Have you seen oh, it? Oh, shit. I should have. God damn it. Yeah, they connect. No, nah, no. Nah, Sabrina's not. Nah, the oh. house on the haunted hill. House oh, hill. Yeah, house yeah. haunted house hill. God damn. Well, we're not the end yet. No. There might, okay, continue. <laughs> uh, I'm just going to take off one of my other ones. But Sabrina's a great fucking show. It's Sabrina the Change, which it's redone from like the 90s, except it's way fucking cooler. And <laughs> Sabrina's a teenager. She is. But it's cool. It's a cool show. I don't know. It's really fucking... Like, yeah, but the cat doesn't fucking talk. No, it doesn't. But Satan's in it, so I yeah. mean... Martin Mull's not, though. He's not the president. Not uh, president. Uh, principal. Sorry. Martin okay. Mull. You know. <laughs> uh, Colonel Mustard and Clue. Okay, here's one. You. Have you watched You? Me? Yes. No. Okay. You is... Oh, they're, like, probably the most suspenseful show that i've watched on netflix so you is you follow the stalker like it's not like there's a girl and a guy and a guy stalks the girl you don't follow the girl getting stalked you follow and it like it's creepy how you can identify with him but you follow the guy stalking the girl so you're like following him sneaking in her place and like like it, it's just crazy. Like there's some really off the wall things. Like she she loves having sex right in front of her window on a very busy New York street. Mm-hmm. It's like let me make sure the blinds are open. Okay, there's my couch <laughs> right in front of the window. Let's do. I have a bedroom. Fuck that. Let's go right. It's just and he's just standing outside doing his thing. Mm-hmm. But like to everybody else, he's a really nice guy. Like he stands up for this kid in his apartment being abused. Like he'll stand up for these people and he'll do the the right thing and bring somebody their money back. But then he's this ultimate creeper. So in some scenes you're like, oh, what a good guy. And then sometimes you're like. This guy's a pervert, uh, but there's a lot of suspense. Really good show. You. So this next show I have, I know you haven't seen it. Um, it's an anime. Mm. Um, it's called Ajin. Ajin? Ajin. I think there's like a sub tag. It's like being human. Oh, isn't that that one with like the werewolf guy and no. being human? Is yeah, that... No, that's a, that's not an anime. It's a di- that's a show. Yeah, it's a different show. But it exists. Yes, it does. So Ajin is uh it's about um they're they're like this like sub race of people. I don't know why they're sub race of people, honestly. Because they have like this shadow that they can control and like some of them are different powered. Like Peter Pan. Kinda. Except okay. a little more. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that wasn't that far off actually. Yeah, yeah, cool. Um but I pay attention. If you have the shower the shower. If you have the <laughs> shadow, you can't die. <laughs> if you have the shower. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's it's a uh, it's kind of cool how many seasons is it or is it just two. one two? two okay i got i already mentioned it it wasn't on my list originally but i remembered it when you said sabrina uh haunted hill house is that what it's even called i always get it there's the house on the haunted hill and then there's like haunted hill house do you thought, you know what i'm talking about the haunt- i think it's haunted, the haunted hill haunted hill haunted, haunted hill, hill house. house yeah so good Bent neck lady, God, that blew my mind. I never finished it. It's it doesn't matter. It's so good. I think it's ten episodes. Each one's like an hour long. Like it is like it. It's it's there's jump scares. There's some really creepy moments. They do a great job. They hire people literally to just hide in the shadows. Like they, really? I, I was reading about it. Apparently, like every scene or at least every like set of scenes, they literally put people and just put them out there. Like you might not catch them. And but sometimes if something seems a little off or a little weird and like there's there's a bunch of like articles online where you can see like where people circle mm-hmm. it and stuff. But they just do such a great job making it creepy, but it's also so much about family dynamics and things like that. Like it's about a family grieving and dealing with their issues while in this like haunted location and it's so good. Just so good. I need to watch that for Halloween this year. Yes. I do. And you have to watch it chapter 1. I do. Continue. So this is the last one, right? Yeah, for you. Yeah, um, I had another one, but fuck it. You can give. We'll give shout-outs after we do these, like just okay. quick, like. Blip, blip. Okay, so 
I don't know how into like competition uh, cooking shows you are. <laughs> Probably not very right. Competition cooking shows. Like, um, you know, like, I like beat Bobby Flay. Oh, okay, um, and I like Chopped. Chopped. I like You've Chopped. You've been too. Chopped. Um, hold on. I like. I don't really watch Iron Chef. Let I me... love. Iron... You know the old Iron Chefs. You ever watch those? My mom did. That was the shit. I love old Iron. Chef. I, like I still watch them on YouTube. Beat Bobby Flay, Chopped, and the Diners, Drive-ins, and Dives. Or I like that one too. Or is that it was the guys' gro- guys' grocery game? Oh, I like his. Sorry, uh, dude. Whatever. Get to yeah. My show. It's on Netflix now, exclusively. Cupcake Wars. No. Yeah. It's close though. Great British baking show. Never watched it. You've never fucking... I love that show. Dude, I love that show. It's so good. Um, it's like the people aren't like angry. It's like they like support each other while they're baking. It's It makes me feel happy in my heart, Tyler. Okay. I love that show. It's okay. Great. So that's your fifth one? Yeah. Okay, my fifth one. And I got two shout outs after this one. The Order. Have you watched The Order? I started. Yes. So it's... it's uh, I, I first... I was like, this is how it works. Claire starts watching a show. I'm skeptical. And then I start watching it on my own because <laughs> I like it so much. So it's like there's this university where that's supposed to have this like underground um, like allegiance. Uh, what are those called though? Like a uh, cult. Cult. Yeah. Like this underground cult, like the blue flower or whatever yeah, it's yeah. called. And the the main kid's dad is like super anti that. So he like tries to get into it and figure it out and becomes a spy but then you know there's the girl he likes but so it's like there's like this family and then like girl dynamic but then there's all this supernatural stuff happening on the side too um i was surprised how much i liked it but yeah i think it's great do you want to give a shout out to the yeah one? i got one shout out it's um it's a netflix show it's called last kingdom okay and it's kind of like um kind of like vikings i don't know if you've seen vikings no but it's like medieval times there's mm-hmm. vikings there's europeans fighting in the 1300s okay so it's sword fights battles it's cool okay uh my two this one is more fx but it's on uh it's on netflix i love gotham gotham is just fantastic i love gotham and scream scream is fantastic okay uh this segment is back y'all know what's up you done messed up that's good thank you thank you yeah thank you that was right off the noggin right there all right so Charlie, I have a question for you. Go ahead. How do you feel about conversion therapy? Uh, does it mean like going from gay to straight? Yes. That's a terrible thing. Is it? Yeah. Have you heard of McRae Game? Does that name sound familiar? Nope. Okay. About 20 years ago, he's Southern. he's a Southern Baptist guy. Mm-hmm. About 20 years ago, he started his own... Well, he started the Truth Ministry in 99... But then he joined Hope for Wholeness. So for 20 years, dude's been trying to convert gay people into being straight. Okay. In June of 2019, Homeboy came out as gay. <laughs> so there are so many levels of you done messed up. And, and, and I, like, I've gone pretty hard on people in this before. I don't want to go too hard on them here because I know... Like, society sucks. Like, it's hard for people. But there's this weird phenomenon when people feel embarrassed about feeling a certain way, they, like, flip it and become extra Mm anti-it. Have you ever experienced anything like that? Not to this degree, maybe, but just in general. Have you ever been anti-something that you were afraid to... Like, were you publicly anti-something because you actually liked it and felt embarrassed about that? Yeah. um, There was this kid in, like sixth grade who cried because of a book yeah and honestly i probably would have cried too but thankfully i didn't because we all made fun of him yes yeah so it was that same kind of idea yeah except much worse that was me with savage garden growing up yeah every my sister liked savage garden and i secretly did too but people made fun of them the, i knew i love you before is I that met a, you. is that a band yeah i knew i love you before i met you oh, okay i've been waiting all my life you know you know the song anyway it it's just like like, I feel bad for all the people he harmed. That's where he messed up. Like, like you and people need to learn from him. You have to be you have to be yourself because whether it's f- five minutes or 20 years or 50 years, you, the real you is going to come out. You can only put something off for so long. And I'm sure he was peer pressured. He's got a wife and two kids. He was so adamant about it for 20 years, converting these people. And he did it himself for six years. So he knows and he calls it ba- like borderline torture. 
what was happening to these people. And he was in charge of it for 20 years. He actually got fired from uh, Hope for Wholeness because he was watching too much gay porn. And they found out, so he got kicked off the board. But in a roundabout, happy ending sort of way, when he came out, he actually, he has support from his family and a lot of the gay community actually supported him. That's nice. So, so if they're not going to be harsh on him, I'm not going to be too harsh on him. But I still think, I mean, 20 years is a long time. <laughs> it is a long time. That is a long that time there. to be gay and be trying to convert people, which is just so messed up in itself. Like, it's just so messed up. So you're headed in the right direction, but McCray, you're still done messed up for two decades. So I got this from CNN, just okay. to source it. Robert and Tiffany Williams, they've both uh, they've done messed up. They're a married couple. So what would you do if you randomly got $120,000 $120, be nice. in your bank account? What would you do? I would keep it. Yeah. Uh, they didn't keep it. They spent it. Oh, like they, money laundering. Yeah. Well, no. Kind it, of, right? That's like if you have money you're not supposed to have, you spend it on things so that you don't have it anymore. You have the stuff. Yeah, but she, that's not exactly what happened. Okay. Because there was an error in the bank. So oh. that's how they got the money in their account just randomly. Oh. So they spent it on stuff like they got an SUV. Mm-hmm. They got a couple four-wheelers. Oh, things that depreciate. <laughs> cool. <laughs> they got a camper. Um, they also gave $15,000 to their friends. So they're so they're actually that's kind of nice. It was nice, but the point is it wasn't their money to give away. So now they're being charged with um felony theft, mm-hmm. and they have lots of overlap overdrafts. Yes, they have lots of overdraft fees. I know for a while Huntington was like thirty bucks a day, so that, <laughs> that's a lot. Yeah, but yeah, can you imagine? Like, I think they're gonna go to jail. They should have bought a house because that appreciates, and then they could have sold it for. They didn't do this right. I know, no, no. <laughs> they messed up. Oh man. Yeah. Um, uh, Tiffany and I forgot his name. Is it John? Something Williams. Some real plain. Robert and Tiffany Williams. Robert and Tiffany Williams. They have done messed up. Where were they? Not, where are they from? I was about say? to say I don't know where they're from. Okay. I don't remember. I don't remember. But yeah, that's that's the story. It, it's just really stupid. Like it's a moral question too. Like what do you fucking do? And it's just I don't yeah. know. Not do that what they did. Super, 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 super quick done messed up. Oakland Raiders, soon to be the <laughs> Las Vegas Raiders. Holy shit, you messed up with a Antonio Brown. Did you hear about that? Mm-hmm. I like, actually did. They they gave up two draft picks, which they everybody thought was a steal to get Antonio Brown. And the dude, pretty he hired a social media specialist to weasel his way out of Oakland, got released over the weekend, and within like five hours got picked up by the Patriots, which... <laughs> He wanted to get traded from Pittsburgh to the Patriots, and Pittsburgh denied it. So he pretty much used any team that would grab him, which ended up being Oakland because they're as desperate as the Browns, who I am not talking about the Browns today. Um, <laughs> but they got, they got screwed. So Oakland Raiders, you done messed up. So this is a new segment we have uh, called Moral Debate. And the idea is that we're going to take a moral philosophical question and – with one with a couple sides and we're both going to pick a side and debate on what the better option is. I feel like there will be instances where we would have both been on the same side, but I think so too. But I think the idea is that it's not about being right. Okay. I mean, I will be, (laughs) and I'm going to pick the good (laughs) side. So, (laughs) okay. So this first question, um, I read, I read a couple of them. I, I like this one. You are an emergency worker that has just been called out to the scene of an accident. When you arrive, you see that the car belongs to your wife. Fearing the worst, you rush over to see she is trapped in her car with another man. She sees you, and and although barely conscious, she manages to mouth the words, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. (laughs) You don't understand. (laughs) You don't understand, but her look answers your question. The man next to her is her lover, with whom she's been having an affair. You reel back in shock, devastated by what your eyes have just told you. She must have given some look. (laughs) (laughs) As you step back, the wreck in front of you comes into focus. You see your wife is seriously hurt, and she needs attention straight away. This must be a British. Um, (laughs) Right quick. (laughs) (laughs) Pip, pip, cheerio. Even if she gets attention, there is a very high chance she'll die. You look at the seat next to her and see her lover. He's bleeding heavily from a wound to the neck, and you need to stem the flow of blood immediately. It will only take about five minutes to stop, but it will mean your wife will definitely die. 
If you tend to your wife, however, the man will bleed to death, despite the fact it could have been avoided. What would you choose to work on? Okay, can I can I choose to save the wife? Are you cool with saving the dude? Yeah, I'm fine with that. Cool. Um, first, I just want to say, I don't like the word lover. It's so gross. Yeah. You don't like lover? No, I hate the word. I hate that but word. But you like babe and deer and baby. Nah, I mean, I don't like babe. Yeah, babe. I just, just calling him a pig. Um, do you want to go first? Well, it's going to be a debate, so. Yeah, okay. My opening argument All right. is, I would say that context probably comes into this. And I would say that there are definitely instances in real life. I mean, cheating's never good. Cheating's never good. It doesn't help anything. But there is always instances where maybe somebody could have pushed somebody away. Somebody could have did something. So it could be on me or the viewer, the person reading the question. It could be on them that they've done poor actions and been a bad lover and led uh, led her to have to find comfort and companionships elsewhere. So even though she's in the bad situation and she's the one that went to somebody else, doesn't mean that I wasn't the one that pushed her away. And when it comes down to life and death, everything is about meaning. I mean, uh, uh, somebody's going to die all the time. And it only matters to you whether or not you know the person or care about the person if there's meaning. And that sounds really cold and harsh, but it's also true. Like if, uh, if the Atlanta Hawks play-by-play announcer passed away today, I'd be like, man, that sucks. But it'd be like, kind of like, you know, whatever. I hate to say it like that. It wouldn't be whatever, but it would be like, that sucks. But today, the Cleveland Cavaliers play-by-play announcer died, and that hit me, and I was like, holy shit, I'm never going to hear another wine and gold winner or right down Euclid. Like, that hit me. I was like, man, and I don't even know the guy. So I would say, based on my own feelings in how I attribute meaning in the moment, I would want to save my wife, even if there's a better chance to save him. Um, You're like, ditto. <laughs> Next, <laughs> uh, honestly, I probably would have picked the wife's side over the uh, over the uh, lover's side. But seeing as I'm on this side, uh, just because I mean, so he, they're both going to die if you don't do anything. Yes, his chances are much better. So Wait, why is nobody else there? Why is it just us? Because you got there first. I don't know. Was I just walking my dog? No, it's you're. Uh, Didn't they crash into somebody else? No, no, I think they just crashed. The, but car, it, the car just blew up. I don't know. You're you're picking apart the question. All right. I'm just saying, if you, it shouldn't be you do nothing, they both die. Like um, like unless you're in the woods. Like I well, it says you're the first. I know. I know. Movie. I know. I don't know. I'm it's manipulating. A moral, it's a moral question. All right, continue. As uh, I'm not saying it's karma. Maybe it is a little bit. So his chances of surviving are much greater than the wife's. Yes. He's he's bleeding out of the neck. Yeah. And she's got a like, almost a almost a moral wound, and her chances of surviving are much less. So if he does save her, then the man being saved is almost. If he does, if he does save her and doesn't work on the man, the man will certainly die. And I guess the chance for life is greater if he does work on the man, even though he doesn't have a connection. If he can, if the viewer can pull himself away from the dying the the situation. And go off pure odds, the lover is the more rational choice. Yeah, but who in the real world does that? Maybe someone in the medical field. Well, but do you, are are you in the medical field? No. If somebody said, "Hey, either Paulo's gonna die, your dog for yeah. the Paulo dies, or four four random dogs are gonna die," would you choose Paulo and save more life than just his, or would you let four dogs that you don't know die so the one that matters to you would live? I mean that's a that's what this is. I mean it, it now is. it'd be like if Paulo cheated on you with another <laughs> family and I mean was that's weird. There. I mean it's hard to compare cuz it's dogs versus lives. I know. I'm just saying like I would I would let four random cats die to let Gus live and that's not that's not good but this is a more question. That's why I think it always comes down to meaning for each person. It's a, I mean it depends. I mean did Apollo hurt me emotionally? Did, uh, and, and, and in that moment, you're scorned. Yeah. And you you have to feel that in the moment. And it, like, can you say you have to set aside, like, you have to say you have to, every person is, has meaning. Yes. So what she just did to you, how can you not take that in consideration? Yeah, but it, that would be saying that, that cheating is a, like a, it deserves death. You know what I mean? Well, 
Like people make, and that's a major mistake, but people make mistakes all the time, especially if you were part of the reason why. Like if you were the best husband in the entire world, did everything for her. Like if this really blindsided you, then you probably in that moment would be more angry. But if there's any type of connection you could make of being like, shit, I've been working a lot of overtimes or I did miss her birthday last week or, you know what I mean? Like things like that. Like, it, like, and I feel like that stuff would hit later. Like if I, I feel like if I saw that situation, just my pure adrenaline would be like, I have to save my wife. It wouldn't be like, well, and, and, and that's such a weird thing to be able to make a connection based on just a look. I think just the pain in your heart, just the initial re- gut reaction of realizing what was happening. I think that would. Couldn't have been a coworker. <laughs> <laughs> she says, I'm sorry. He's She's like, like, I'm sorry. My wife's not allowed being around other guys. <laughs> yeah, but, I mean, she could have been have sorry that... for wrecking the car that I probably <laughs> bought. If you have that mentality. <laughs> <laughs> she was dead anyway. I just waxed this car. Fuck. Oh, That's probably why I'm... Don't... If she if she's going, I'm sorry. She probably did something really fucking bad because she's on her deathbed. She could be sorry for putting you in this situation. I'm sorry that I crashed and I'm dying, and you're gonna have to raise our cats alone. I I'll give you. It is very vague. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, but I think in context, it's obviously the the that they're together, the guy and her. In the context of the story, yes. I think in order. I think my argument makes the most sense because he's probably gonna live if you save him. That's true, and if you value every life as exactly the same, that would make sense. He's probably got a family. Yeah, her. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I mean, not her, but and uh, you know, your in laws. But I also think, like, like I don't think society would blame you for trying to save your wife. I agree with you. Like, I feel like, I think maybe the more noble path is to, to save the man who is going to live if you help him. Yeah, if she and I think it would depend on the injury too. Like if it's it it gives the context that there's a chance that she could live. If she was like like uh what is it called? Signs where she's literally in half being yeah. held by the car. Mm-hmm. In that situation it's kind of like okay. If, if if I knew that it was 100% she is going to die, I probably would save him. Well, that's not even a question then. Yeah. Yeah, well, I gave you my answer to the question in general, though. Okay. So here, let me let me let's let's wrap this up and let me say this. Okay. I think I ninety nine percent won, so I'm gonna give you like thirty <laughs> more seconds to try and beat this argument because I'm about to pin you. I think the most rational thing to do is to step away and tell your coworker that man is going to be saved. My wife's probably gonna die. Yeah. I think that's the most rational thing to do, and the only way it makes sense. Studies show in, in, in intense things when shit's hitting the fan and everybody's in crazy, uh, most people are rational. <laughs> that, that's sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, I got that. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. As you guys know, whether you follow us on social media, whether you were listening to the last podcast, you know that we failed. So for this second week cinema, we had to watch... Dora, the Explorer, and the Lost City of Gold. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I got it. Me? Was, do you want to know what the best thing about the movie was? For you? Yeah. That it was an empty movie theater. Yeah. And then we got to sit in the back and just talk the whole time. Yeah, we did talk. Uh, commentary. It was, you know. It made it bearable, at least. Yeah. Um, but I'm, it was actually cool. I've never been in an experience where I was literally the only people in the theater. First time it ever happened. So it was kind of fun. We, we went in the wrong theater first. We, we were watching Spider-Man for a second. I thought it was one of those promos where like Spider-Man's swinging around and then he grabs the popcorn and he grabs the soda and he gets the bad guys. And they're like, what are you going to do, Spider-Man? He's like, I'm going to go to Cinemark. But then he just kept doing stuff and you were like, I think we're in the wrong movie. Yeah, I was like, we had to go. I was like, we don't, we don't got to go. <laughs> but we had to go. So we had to watch this movie. Man, man uh, I like Swiper a lot. He was funny. Yeah, man. Me? I know, man. <laughs> Me? <laughs> hey, I know, man. All right, let's get into this. Plot. So the first P, there were, the plot was real weak. It was really weak, obviously. Um, there were a lot of plot holes. Like, it was like Swiss cheese. What were some of the plot holes? Um, 
like people were places they should have been there people were not talking people that they should have been talking to what do you mean like the the parents should have like they went off radio for no reason oh well it wasn't fully explained like why they went off no they just yeah. stopped talking to her their their campsite was ravaged i don't know why they had another campsite uh the guy just like they went through this like trap at the end and then the 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 bad guy was just there there were just a lot of unexplained fucking I wasn't questioning you. I just want to know which ones you were talking about. Oh, okay. I'm I agree. D- okay, let me ask you this. Did you take into consideration that it was a child's movie when ranking it or no? I mean, this I still couldn't follow it and I'm an adult. Oh. I I not I don't mean just plot. I mean this entire rating. Did you say well it is a kids movie at all? Yeah. I okay. Did. I did too, but I mean I'm I'm not going to I'm not going to give it too much benefit of a doubt, but um, it was a by the books children's plot. It's like start off in your comfort zone, get put somewhere else, and then you get put on a quest. And, and, and it's just like, oh, hey, I'm the nerdy kid and here's my quirk. I bet it's not going to come into play 45 minutes later. And yeah. it's like, all right, you know, they, that guy's weird for this reason. That'll come back. And mm-hmm. she, she's mean. She'll be nice by the end. Mm-hmm. And he's giving her the cold shoulder. He'll come around. But you know, so it's like. But but let me say this. If this was a kid's movie, which it is, and I had a kid, which I don't, and I went and took them to this movie, this was probably one of the more engaging movies that I would see with my kids. Like, I, I could watch it with my kid and be like, hey, you know what? I, there's worse things I could have done. Yeah. Well, yeah. It's like, a, at least there's like a little bit of water in the desert, you know? Right. But it was like, I mean, there's, you know, there's the twist. There's, you know, there's an animated portion of course. I like, actually like that. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I thought it was funny. But what happened during that? Like, I Nothing. know she was, she got high. Um, <laughs> yeah. I give it a two. <laughs> the plot? Yeah, what'd you give it? Two. Two. Yeah. Pacing. So when we sat down in the theater alone, I said, Charlie, what's the runtime for this movie? <laughs> and I'm thinking, all right. Most horror movies, which are like the low, and there's like comedy and horror movies. Those are like the low quality end of adult movies. They're normally like 90 minutes. So I was thinking, all right, this is for kids. Kids are antsy. I'm like, you may be thinking 80, 85, maybe 90 minutes. And Charlie's like, it's about an hour and 45 minutes. It's like, what? So instantly from that moment, I'm like, this pacing cannot be good. And I'm going to find out why. Yeah, it was uh, real slow. Yeah. Real slow. And it had lots of points where it could have ended and didn't. There can I can I mention two moments? Sure. Alright, here are two moments uh that I was like pacing. There's a song about pooping. <laughs> There's a song about pooping. Kid, yep. I I'm not we know you're not gonna watch this. So I'm not spoiling this for you. And don't you get you actually you know what we would love the engagement. You can tell us we're spoiling it for you. There's a point where they get kidnapped, the kids get kidnapped. They start in a museum. Next thing you know, they're in South America. Mm-hmm. And so obviously they, they didn't prepare to be where they are. And they're walking around. And, and, and I called it too. I, le- I leaned over when she was walking. One of the girls is walking funny. And I leaned over. I'm like, she's got a shit. <laughs> and I was kind of joking, but kind of serious. And, and they were like, you got to poo. I, of course I have to poo. So literally there's probably five to 10 minutes of this movie where they're like, it's okay. You have to poo. Let's go over here. We're going to sing a song about digging a hole. And then you actually see her pooing that was crazy. while these arrows that was are insane. flying around. Yeah. Second thing is when she goes to America for the first time and they're like, it's going to be different in America. There's going to be these things called raves with ravers. And then the dad bee boxes pretty well, pretty well. He does a good job, but he bee boxes for probably 60 seconds straight, which doesn't sound like a long time. It's a long time. You're just like looking at your watch, like okay, you like there, and there, like there's always a moment. Here's where pacing fails when there's when there's a high point, and then you pass it. Yeah, like a scene, a good scene ends at a high point, unless it's like the end. There's climax, there's resolution, but for by and large, there's normally a high point, and if you go past it, it will make the scene feel awkward long. or off or long. So those are my two big comments on the pacing. What what do you got? Um, it was just it was just way too slow. There are lots of moments that could have just been way like way shorter. Like stuff is just shit was all wrong. It was just it, like it was like the scenes were too. You know what I mean? Should rank it? Yep. Um, two. It was bad. I give it a two as well. 
Acting. For a kids movie, the acting wasn't terrible. It was believable in moments, and it wasn't the worst. Um, I thought the best was probably Dora for all the energy I she put out. Yeah. She did. She she really actually as a lead role in a kids movie did a good job. Yeah, um, the parents were. I mean, they didn't really try. I don't think. No, I did not like the mom no, at all. No, she was a bitch. Yeah, I didn't like the mom, and the dad was like comedic relief, and it, it, he was goofy, but I don't think he was trying very hard. No, he probably had a lot of fun with this movie, though. Probably they were probably like, it's gonna be shit, so just have fun. He's like, fuck it, all right. I think the only person that really tried to act was um. The other girl. Yes. the Yeah, the Pooh girl. Yeah, I think her and Dora tried their best. Yeah, Sammy the Pooh. That's and the, name, the yeah. villain, I think he was being over. over the top on purpose. That's what children's villain are supposed to be like. Yeah, but... I came around, but I did not love Diego's... And this could also be part of complaining about the plot, but, like, there was no introduction to being frustrated or embarrassed with Dora. Like, he knew... Mm-hmm. her coming over that shit was going to be suck before it happened mm-hmm. like i wish there was that like moment of like oh hey Dora, like what's up and then she's awkward and he's like oh like we don't get to see that moment because he has it before we even see him or yeah. she even gets there he like, comes into the movie having that kind of attitude like he was annoyed before I- anything even happened mm-hmm. and it's like i get it it's like that yeah high school sucks yeah but it's like yeah, you don't. You don't know she was gonna act that way. Yeah, she could have been normal. You didn't know. Yeah, but he he had an attitude the whole time. Yeah, like the acting, it was it was for a kids movie it was fine. I agree. Sammy Sammy did a pretty good job. Dora did a really good job. I didn't love Diego. Then there's that nerdy kid. Like he was just kind of there. He, yeah, he was just in the background. Gringo. Yeah, it, I, the problem is is for me like they used comedy. There were definitely moments for humor, but sometimes, like, you could see they were going to have this, like, unnecessary, irrelevant conversation during a serious moment because they're kids watching and stuff. But at the same time, it's just kind of like, uh, like, it's just, like, it took me out of it because I get it's there for humor, but nobody would be having these conversations. Like, if you have mercenaries chasing you, trying to kill you, you're not going to make, you know. Right, like in the it, tree. But it's a kid's movie, so. Oh, <laughs> What was it? The arrow went through the tree. You're like, is he really bleeding? <laughs> and then it was juice. And I was no, like, I was God like, damn. You know how bad I wanted somebody to die? I, and yeah. I'm not saying somebody did die. I'm not saying somebody didn't die. But I'm going to tell you so badly I wanted somebody to die. And there were so many moments. If this was an adult comedy, like, we're okay. We're okay. Arrow through the face. And mm. I would be like, Charlie, that's when he would die. And, and nobody died in that, those moments. So. Would you? What did you rank it? Oh, right, uh, three. I gave it a two. Two, really? Yeah, dude. Even though Dora was okay, Dora was okay, and Sammy was okay. One plus one, that's two. <laughs> okay. Cinematography. All right, there are some. There are some good shots. Cinematography. Yeah, there are some good shots. The, go, um, go ahead. Um, there's there's the underwater parts. I thought the stuff in the jungle is really cool. I didn't love the animation parts, but I know you said you did that. Technically, it's a cinematography choice. There were definitely some moments where I was like, oh, they're in a set. You know what I mean? Like, like there are moments where I'm like, ah, like okay, they were not in the jungle. But there are <laughs> some, like, they're, like the, the chases, the arrow scene, like everything with the gold. Like, it was an interesting cinematography choice to... To not give us a great view of the city of gold. Spoiler alert! But I actually like it was an interesting choice. I didn't hate it. Yeah, it was kind of like Pulp Fictiony until they actually. Yeah, they're like this is what could be in the. Suitcase. Yeah, you saw it in like the rubble, like mm-hmm. when everything was going down with the city of gold. It's just a gold. And then the monkey, the monkey talking. All right, sorry, that's not cinematography. <laughs> Continue. Uh, with your I thoughts. thought the cinematography was actually pretty basic. Um, I didn't think there was anything special to it. It was just. Uh, serviceable um i was very aware they were on a set yeah. the entire time well you didn't even love once upon a time in hollywood so of course you wouldn't like this one yeah it, it was just it was it was serviceable so that's what i would give it what kind of what scenes are you thinking of specifically uh the uh the quicksand mm-hmm. was obviously a set 
it, 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 it's an interesting site because it's kind of multi-layered. Yeah, why didn't they find real quick, Sam? <laughs> Let's kill these actors. I want <laughs> death. I want blood. That was the biggest fake out for me, too. I was like, yes, yes. And then you see the feet and you're like, yeah, Fuck. Well, you you see the feet. Not obviously not because like they couldn't find real quicksand. I think the way they shot it was stupid. Yeah. Um, what about the water scene? With the, it reminded me of Uncharted. Okay. The star scene was kind of cool though. Trying to figure the puzzle. That was um, pretty cool. Me, but I don't. I don't necessarily. I don't know if I would give that to cinematography. Okay, that set design or whatever. Yeah. Okay. All right, that's fair. I I gave it a three. Which is my highest rating yet. Uh, two. Two? Okay. Dialogue. It is a child's movie. It's for children. That being said. I mean, it's not the weakest dialogue I've ever heard. No. I've I watched Angry Birds. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty bad. It's not super punny. No. And that's good. Yes. I kind of like the songs. I thought they were fun. I didn't like that the songs didn't rhyme. Dora <laughs> is not good at rhyming. That's why I liked them. I thought they were stupid, but on purpose. Yeah. Diego's an asshole for no reason. Uh, well, that's not really have to do with dialogue. That's more you don't acting. Think so? Okay. Well, I was just thinking about the dialogue he gave to each everybody else. Mm-hmm. Is I don't know if it's dialogue, but he kind of falls in love with Sammy through dialogue. I guess that wouldn't be dialogue either. No. It's it's stupid. It, it's it's weak. But I'll 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 go with the cinematography. It's it's serviceable. It's a little bit above serviceable. It, I think it's better. I think it's like it's still subpar, but it's more average than the cinematography. There were moments I actually laughed out loud, and I give credit to the dialogue for that. Like there were actually moments where I like really did it. Like it wasn't like a <laughs> like there were actually moments where I really laughed out loud. It's, I mean, it's a kid's movie. There's only so much that they can do. Like, the, yeah. like the villain's going to have his cheesy, you know, monologue type thing. And then the kids are going to... They say their quirky things when shit's really serious. And the dad, like, holy shit. Like, they they're, they got a mercenary holding a gun to their head. And he's like, you better not touch my daughter. And then they're like, we're going to kill everybody else, too. He's like, ah, they're not my kids. That was funny. Yeah, like, it's like... Like, not shit that would really happen. But... It like in a kid like it's, it's so tough because it, you can't like it's so different than like Midsummer or Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. We're not like critiquing it based on like how really really good it was. It's just kind of like like I feel like we just watched like it was an adult comedy where thing people say things in situations they normally wouldn't, and did it make you laugh? And this one actually there were some moments that made me laugh. Did you laugh out loud? Any yeah, there's that one. It's in the trailer, but the part with um. They're in the box, and the and door pulls out the knife, and the girl goes, "Look, everyone, door has a knife." Oh yeah, and that was. I mean, that's. I mean, that's yeah. cute, funny. And then it's followed up by like the dumb stuff where it's like, "Wow, the yo-yo really is the most dangerous thing I have." It's yeah, like, it's just like, <sighs> I think the most dangerous weapon she had was the knife. Probably. Yeah. I gave it a three. I like because just I would have probably given it a two, but the fact that it's a kids' movie and because it made me laugh out loud and I didn't hate my life, I say a three. Uh, the fact that it actually got a couple laughs, I would give it a three. Three? Mm-hmm. All right, cool. Let's calculate. All right, Charlie, we are too lenient. We yes, are too we lenient. Are. Somehow, some way, th- th- Dora, the explorer in the lost city of gold, got old school LeBron James at 23, which is, come see, come sa? How is this not feeling it? Maybe we, know. maybe. Maybe deep down, maybe we felt it. Maybe, maybe we felt it. I don't. I don't think we did. I think I don't know. I I think we were just too nice, dude. We all we did twos and threes. Like I mean, it's because it's a kids movie. If this yeah. was an adult movie, there'd be a one in there somewhere. Yeah, well, there'd have to be. But I don't know. I there's gonna be a movie that's gonna get a two or a three, and people are gonna be like, "You gave Dora a two and a three. You I know guess what? So. Hey, I'm standing by what we said. Though. It's a kids movie. Yeah, it's a kids movie. I mean, if we judge it to the standard that we'd put something else, we're just old kids. Okay, <laughs> we just are. So that was our review of Dora the Explorer and the Lost City of Gold, which is in South America. If you want to go find it, Dora. 
Did you ever see the Delicioso? Um, hey, that was interesting. That was not interesting. <laughs> that was funny when she would look at the screen. And, yeah, that and then was The funny. dad was like, the fuck is she That's doing? a face. And this is your daughter. Did you ever see that movie, El, Di- El Dorado? Yeah, dude. The it's road, a great the, fucking The Road movie. to yeah. El Dorado. That's actually, that's Disney, right? Where's that? That's not Pixar. It must be Disney. That's actually my favorite Disney movie. I don't think it is Disney. It's Warner Brothers. Mm, what about, wait, what's the other one? There's Pixar, there's Disney, and, and then there's... there's no Groove? No, no. Oh. I mean, like, Disney, Pixar, and then DreamWorks. Oh. Is it DreamWorks? I think it might be. Well, I don't think a, it's Disney. This will be a fact check. Anyway, this <laughs> is my favorite, like, not not animated, mm-hmm. because that's, like, Toy Story and, and Finding Nemo, but, like, cartoon. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite one ever. It's I've, a great that, movie. I love The Road to El Dorado. Yeah. So good. That's a good one. So, yeah, that was our review. Hopefully, next month, we won't fail high five, so we'll Woo! see. Next time it won't be a kids movie because that it, there's definitely leniency in it. So we'll probably just pick a, a, a an old person movie that we don't want to see. A bad adult movie. I'm calling it now though. If we get high five right next month, the one I'm leaning for is Joker. If you don't want to see it, we don't have to. I don't think we can because of your schedule. Because of my schedule. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it comes out the fourth. It's early enough for it. Ha ha ha. Okay. Think about. It. We'll talk. We'll talk. Okay. Next, 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 next week on week three VIP, we got Lauren Brabson coming yeah. up. Yeah, who she uh, owns the area musically. What? I heard a noise. Oh, it's a ghost. Okay. So yeah, we're on we're on Podbean now. Um, Are we still on SoundCloud or no? Yeah, you'll still you can still listen to us on SoundCloud, but you guys don't anyway, so I don't know why it matters. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Y'all listen on Apple. I know you do. I do. So yeah, so we appreciate you guys for listening. To our Dora the Explorer review. I hope you found it. Uh, what's the word? Informative. Yes. Um, if you guys liked the moral, this is the first time we ever did the moral segment. So if you guys liked it, let us know. If you guys have any questions or any things you guys want us to try next time, shoot us a question and we'll we'll see. But yeah, just keep keep liking, subscribing, and we have seven five star reviews now. So I really appreciate that. Next next week, I'll shout out the person who actually commented because. <laughs> I didn't screenshot it, so I apologize. But we see you, and we love you. Um, we have also might have a collaboration coming up soon, which that'll be exciting. What? Yeah. Have you told me about this yet? If you've looked at our email in the last uh, oh yeah uh, two yeah weeks. I did I did okay okay I know what you're talking about yes. yeah that that spike was um but anyways thank you guys so much and remember this is the segue best thing to happen to you on a Thursday. Cheaped, uh, cheaped, <laughs> cheaped, beat Bobby Flay.